Oh no, that was pretty lucky. <laughs> Not right there. Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to be doing a let's play of my game Snowball Save Summer. So let's go ahead and dig into it. Uh, let's delete our old save data so I can play it from uh, the beginning. And I want to do a developer commentary as I go through. There was once an elf named Snowball. That is, until the monster Krampus placed a curse upon him. The curse transformed him into, well, a snowball. Today is the summer solstice, and it happens to be the hottest day of summer, too. Because of the summer's heat, Snowball can't play outside with his elf friends. Instead, he stays cool inside his underground cave. Snowball, my boy. We have an emergency. Holda, the queen of snow, has been kidnapped. Last night, the evil witch Perkta and her minions broke into the Winter Palace. They carried Queen Holda all the way to Krampus Land. Without the Queen, the North Pole has already begun to melt. Soon there will be nothing left but water. This is a very global warming story. Snowball, last winter you risked your life against Krampus to save me, and to save Christmas. That was actually a game that I also made. Uh, it's the This is the sequel to that game. There could be no better candidate for the job of saving summer. So that's why Santa... Enlist the help of Snowball. What's that? You're afraid to go out because you'll melt from the heat. Ho ho ho, nothing some of my magic can't fix. I'll cast a spell to help you keep cool. That said, my spell can't protect against fire-wielding foes. Be careful not to touch any hot flames you might find along the way. Indeed, the path to Krampus Land is filled with danger. If you need any tips, come visit me at my gift shop. I know these lands well. So... That's a little bit of a hint that if you have trouble, you should go talk to Santa. Now go forth, Snowball, and rescue the Queen. The North Pole is counting on you. Alright. And we are immediately dumped into uh, the opening level. Let me get rid of the uh, display counter here. There we go. Yeah, so... Uh, here we are. To escape the cave, you'll need to learn how to jump. Hold down the left mouse button to aim. When you let go, you'll jump along the line. So obviously I'm the developer. I kind of knew that already. Um, I'll read these out loud just so that you are aware of what the signs say. Um, now, you can also use the keyboard to move left and right. Um, which I... It was a feature that I only added later on. Because people found it too difficult to use the... Uh, just the mouse. So... But I'm pretty comfortable just using the mouse. Keep an eye out for three golden snowflakes hidden in each level. They can be used to unlock special items from Santa's gift shop. So we're going to grab every snowflake. For this playthrough, I'm going to show you how to get all of them. Watch out for the gas pits up ahead. Don't fall into them. They'll melt you to pieces. Um, I think uh, earlier in the game's development, we had a little bit more uh, particle effects going on down there. But I took them out because it was kind of strange. Use the A and D keys to roll past these icicles. Hold the shift key to go in even faster. So, boom. You can jump in mid-air to reach new heights. Try it out. Yeah, so we have a double jump. And we also have to double jump over this. And we can move with the arrow keys while we're in mid-air. That's also useful. Hit this checkpoint to save your progress. If you melt, you will come back to life here. So, uh, that's useful for levels that are longer. Now, you might also be tempted to just sort of grab this up here, but you'll also notice that uh, you can't actually reach it that high up. Um, the only way to get that is to go up and below. So we're going to jump this way. And if you fall down there, you're going to have to redo that part of the level. I did that on purpose. Although that, that maybe that's too frustrating in retrospect to be stuck so so uh, much on the tutorial level. Um, so th there's a couple of ways we can get this. We can just sort of roll down and get it and then fall. Or we can double jump and make it back up here without having to redo that part of the level. So now we have a couple options of where we can go. And over here, there's a sign that says, you can jump inside these holes to travel between rooms. Left click, enter, and right click if you change your mind. Give it a try. So these are like the pipes in Mario. A lot of this game is inspired by Mario and Kirby and Donkey Kong uh, type games, which were the games that I played growing up. 
and enjoyed a lot, so. Um, generally, I was trying to aim for a, uh, I guess, a difficult feel, trying to make the levels hard and challenging, and um, I think a lot of people would say that they are, but I hope I didn't uh, go too overboard with it. The outside world is even more dangerous. Make sure to collect blue snowflakes to restore your health. Good luck. So, since you didn't really get hurt in that level, I told you that there. And we have the flagpole that uh, sends you to the next level. Okay, so this is the map screen, and what you can do here, obviously, is go between levels. The gold flag indicates that we got all of the gold snowflakes in that level. Um, and you can see right here that we have, and you can see which ones, so these are separate ones. Um, you might only have like the first or the third and not the second, so it'll show you that. We also have an inventory screen, uh, at which point we can check uh, stats about the game, how far we've traveled, enemies defeated, costumes and trails, we'll get to that in a second. These are your stats, so that's fire resistance, range, and then uh, attack power. So if you go to Santa's shop, we have coins we can spend. Now, asking Santa for help will tell us where to find golden snowflakes in the levels that we haven't found them in. Uh, we can also buy trails to decorate Snowball with, so we can purchase that one. Um, and we can also get costumes for Snowball, so maybe we want to make him look like a tennis ball. We can do that. And to unlock more power-ups and costumes, we need to collect more gold snowflakes. So that's your incentive to collect things in this game. Okay. Uh, now what we're going to do... Oh, you can also see uh, we have leaderboards here in case you want to compare your time from beating the level to the uh, other people who played the game only available on Steam. So now we're going to play uh, the next level. Oh, but for, before we do that, let's equip our costume. So uh, equip and equip, and then you'll see what that looks like. So now he looks like a tennis ball, and he's got the red trail behind him. So don't get too close to these enemies. They pack a hard punch. So if we do get close, he does punch, and I do get knocked back. So I just have to hit him, and he'll disappear. Now, like I said, I do want to uh, do a 100% run, so I might go out of my way to get these little guys. So I pull the snow uh, cursor back, and it creates a trajectory line. And when I hold shift, I can sort of... It allows Snowball to go faster, which is going to change the trajectory line, so I can line this shot up a little bit better and get all of those. Yeah, and again, uh, I think Shift was mentioned in the first level, but I said it again right there. We've got our arrow, coin arrows. Checkpoint right here. If you can't run, then fight. Aim for the head to inflict massive damage. So, that gives you a little hint. Um, if you do manage to hit them in the head, they die pretty much instantly. So, there's a little bit of a skill to this. As long as you don't hit the horn. <laughs> the horn doesn't do anything. Anyway, we don't need to, we don't need to fight him. Uh, what we want to do is come down here. And go in this hole. And this is, again, similar to level 1-1 in Mario where there's the pipe with the secret, uh, the secret passageway. And now here, I always want to have at least one really tricky snowflake. We have to bounce there and then bounce back, or jump back, I should say. And that's kind of tricky if you're not really good at it yet. But that's the level. So, there you go. I really like the music. Uh, the composer did a fantastic job. Um, I really like that fanfare at the end that plays at each level. Um, I'm going to undo the costumes here because I kind of like the default snowball look. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do the next one. Okay. Time your jumps carefully across moving these moving platforms. 
So the moving platforms were a thing in the first game, Snowball Saves Christmas, and uh, in that game I didn't really know how to program them, so they were kind of glitchy, but I fixed it in this one. Now the training wheels come off, don't miss your jumps or it'll make Santa sad. So I guess that's just a foreshadowing that the levels are a lot harder now. Um, this one in particular, there's a lot of um, bottomless pits. Now you might be tempted to just jump and get those coins, but really what you want to do is wait for a little bit, jump up here, and then get the snowflake. As soon as you touch the platforms up ahead, they'll begin to fall, no pressure. So, again, a warning, just so you're not going into this totally blind. You know, the other day, one of my friends was playing this, and he, he, he made an observation that I had also made, uh, which is like, in this game, you kind of tend to... It's a platformer where you kind of avoid the platforms most of the time, which is an interesting take on the genre. Um, it's a lot faster to just avoid the platforms and jump over everything than it is to actually roll across the ground. Um, and I can definitely see that in this level. And I definitely made that observation myself when I was uh, making it. Uh, this is a tricky shot right here. If you're if you go too fast through this, you'll miss the shot entirely. Um, so initially, when I made the game, you weren't supposed to be able to roll. You just only had the mouse, which made all of these a lot harder to do. Um, so if you want to give yourself a challenge, there is actually a new game plus mode at the very end that disables those uh, easier controls. Warning, fireballs ahead. Avoid them at all costs. So let's get the snowflake. And I made this game in 2018. It took me six months to make it, and I was really kind of working only part-time on it. So I probably could have done a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster. And in retrospect, I definitely could have spent a little bit more time on it, and I might... I'm like, as time goes on, I'm more tempted to update this in the future uh, to really make it the way it was supposed to be. Um, which really, for the most part, it was, but um, there were some game modes that I was hoping to put in, like mini games and um, stuff like that. So these fireballs obviously hurt you. This is uh, more of an athletic course. Um, if you remember those sorts of levels from Mario World or Yoshi's Island. Or Donkey Kong. Once you hop on the next platform, you'll be taken for a hot ride. So we're gonna sit on this platform, but we gotta be kind of clever to get the snowflake here. There we go. <laughs> Whoops. Oh no. Okay. Got to find some health. Ugh. That was that was pretty lucky. Now, fortunately, the checkpoints do recover your whole health. Again, that was kind of a thing to make this game a little bit easier. Jumping in these clouds will bounce you really high. So, it does, in fact, bounce us up. Like, I can look at this game now, years later, and see... Not necessarily flaws, but points of improvement, you know? Like, there should be a lot more animations going on. Like, when you hit the cloud, that should animate. Um, so, I mean, I can be pretty critical of my own game, but I still think it's a fun game. I still think it's really good um, and worth playing, but I can also see why people might not uh, immediately be drawn in unless they see some gameplay first. You know, I, I can understand both sides of it. Okay, now this is the part where the game starts to get tricky. Like, if you're willing to... I mean, I don't know. I like the graphics a lot. I really do like them. But if I put in, like, another three to six months of polishing it up, this could be, like, really good. You know what I mean? Um, so, that's a lesson I learned the hard way. <laughs> 
I would say that this is one of my favorite levels, though. Just the, the feel of it, you know, the, the circular fireballs. Um, having to dodge all of them in midair and stuff like that. that. That's just, that was a fun level to design. And I enjoy going through it, so. Okay, so now, uh, this is the final level of the area, but let's see if we can uh, do one more thing first. Actually, no. Uh, well, okay, here's, here's the deal. We can either do the final level first, or we can do the secret level before the final level. Um, I guess for, for completion's sake, we should do the secret level before the final one, because when we do the final one, we should just end the game with that. So, let's, uh, when we go into the shop here, uh, I can now purchase uh, some power-ups, so let's buy these. So, the range increases the distance we can fly, the power increases our damage that we deal, and the sunscreen decreases the damage we take from heat, so that's really useful. And what we also want to buy, oh, I have just enough coins, um, is the key, and the key lets us unlock the secret levels. So. Now we can go and play the secret level here, called Ice Cube Hills, and we'll do that before we do the boss level. Welcome to the first secret area. A series of very cool challenges await you. So we can just move and hit this Ice Cube, and uh, we can use it as a platform. This was a mechanic that was in Snowball Saves Christmas. Um, I actually really all of these uh, levels were designed after the mechanics and the, the Christmas game. And for those who don't know, uh, Snowball Saves Christmas I made about a few months before this one when it was Christmas time. Um, I made this game when it was summer, and Snowball Saves Christmas was sort of uh, it was just an uh, just a random idea. Like, wouldn't it be funny if you made a game about a snowball that had to roll around and you know controlling it like this, and he was trying to save Christmas, right? That, like, that's just really the inspiration, just a funny idea. And everybody loved it. Like, everybody I showed that game to, they just thought it was really fun, including, um, you know, little kids that, uh, that I know, my family members, you know, I was showing it to them. And, like, you know, whether you're a kid or an adult, you, uh, they like the game, and they think it's fun to throw a snowball around. And... I was inspired to continue uh, turning it into a bigger game, so that's what Snowball Safe Summer is. If an ice cube gets stuck, you can jump on top and hit it from above it to knock it in the direction you're facing. So that's just a way to un... un uh, if you get stuck with an ice cube, you can maneuver it. But uh, but yeah, like all of the mechanics in this game were based off of the ones from Snowball Safe's Christmas. And that game, for reference, I made in three weeks. So, we went from a three-week game to a six-month game. Uh-oh, okay, I gotta concentrate a little bit on this one here, because we gotta get the ice cube onto the cloud. Not not too far, not too, uh... Not far. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That'll bounce it up, maybe. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. That's funny. Uh, I guess this will work. You don't have to play the game the way that it's intended. Well, maybe not. Okay, here we go. Like, as long as you get to the end of the level, it doesn't really matter how you make it happen. Which is kind of the fun of the game. Oh, uh, I just realized I forgot the gold snowflakes. We're gonna have to go back and get those. I was giving too much commentary. Uh, yeah, like, if you don't actively look for them, they can be hard to find. Um, right, so... Especially if it's been years since you played the game and you don't remember where they all are. <laughs> Okay, there's one. So that one's a little bit more obvious. But then you might ask, well, how do we get to it? And the answer is this guy over here. You have to look for the ice cube and then push it over there. So, like, I really wanted to make sure that 
there was replayability in this game. Because the first game didn't have that. You just had really short levels that you would play once and then be done with. But this was like, I wanted to do long levels and levels that you would come back to. And that's why there's the gold snowflakes. So let's go back and, and get those. Okay, now if you uh, carefully looked at this before, you would notice something. We'll see if I can observe right here. So, if you paid close attention when I first uh, went to this level, you can see there are cracks in the wall above me. So that's what we really need to do, is go up and up, and there we go. So now we can get in the secret area, and that's where the first gold snowflake is. Then I think maybe we can go on top of this. Yeah, we can. We can skip that section of the level. Now, I just hope I remember where the second gold snowflake is. Yeah, nice. Oh, maybe it's right here. Yeah, okay. That's that's how we missed him, right? Okay. Now, I want to double check. Uh, if we hit the checkpoint after the gold snowflakes, do we keep them or not? We do. Okay. So we don't have to complete the whole level, we just have to hit a checkpoint. Now let's go back to Sunny Stronghold. This is the castle level of Sunny Tundra. So that guy died, that's sort of a foreshadowing, right? Uh, welcome to the Sunny Stronghold, home of the big Brookdale. Don't make him angry. So, as you might have thought, if we hit the sunlight, we also get hurt. We go in the door. This is obviously based off of the castle and uh, haunted house levels of Mario. You can right-click while mid-air to temporarily avoid taking heat damage. Try it out. So, I only now describe this where you can, uh, watch this. If I hit right, I just go through the light without taking damage. So, that is extremely useful. We're gonna go through the hidden passage here, uh, this time. Okay, kind of a glitch. Um, I'm, I can't see the line while I'm inside the hidden passage. That's kind of strange. Look out for levers along the way. Who knows what might happen when you pull it. Okay. So in that case, the lever, uh, manipulated the sunlight. Man, I'm just enjoying the music in the background. It's, it's amazing that this is actually a soundtrack to a game that I made. Uh, okay, so let's go in the door. And these are going to alternate. Just have to get the rhythm right. Really, it doesn't matter that much. I should have made the damage be a lot uh, more significant from these. Because then you'd have to actually try. Although... Like, it, it's pretty variable how uh, how good people are at this game. Um, some people, like, really struggle with these opening levels, and then they give up really fast. And other people just zoom right through them, and th they look forward to the harder levels later on in the game. Um, which is interesting to me, from a game design perspective. Because, like, I showed this to a, a friend of mine who managed to get through it in about a little over two hours. Um... Which is about what you would expect someone who's really good at the game to get it through. Uh, that was the that was how long it took me to get through it. So the sign says these strongholds are known for their puzzle rooms. Take some time to think it through, and that's kind of a theme. Uh, you know, is every time you're in the the castle level, there's sort of going to be a puzzle that you have to think about. You know, and in this one. We have the ice cubes and we have the light, and the light is melting the ice cubes. So what we have to do is we have to hit the lever to turn the lights off, and now we can push the ice cube through, use it as a platform, and then we can uh, jump on top of it and get up to the next area. Uh-oh. I want to get some health. There we go. So we're going to run into the same problem right here. Hit the lever, jump 
here, knock the ice cube that way. And we can actually just kind of cheat that one and just knock it through. Um, you could hit the lever a second time, but you don't need to. Jump on the cloud. Now this one is a little tricky. Uh, some people get confused on this one. Um, probably the right strategy is just to look around at first and see what's going on. So you can see here we have an ice cube right down here below this gold snowflake. And if you try and jump twice, you can't jump up high enough. Um, at this point anyway. If you get range upgrades, you can probably do it. But if you want to do this the right way without getting the upgrades, then how do you, uh, how do, you do that? Well, we want to go over this way. And we notice that there is a ice cube over here. And it's getting melted by the light. So let's try and change that. We can... You don't have to hit the lever, you can do a well-timed jump to hit the ice cube out of the light's way, but this is probably the easiest way to do it. So you go and you hit the ice cube here, and we're going to have two ice cubes. Okay. Actually, I did this wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I know what it is. So we want to turn this light off here. Uh, shoot. <laughs> Not right there. Okay, we're going to push this guy over here. And we're going to go past this window, so it's not going to get melted this time. Then we're going to hit the lever. And then here, now that we have our two ice cubes right here, it's very important which one you destroy. So we're going to knock this guy into the light, while keeping this guy out of the light. Both lights, I should, well, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to do this. That's going to get destroyed, and it's going to respawn at the top. And then, when it respawns, we're, it's going to fall right down onto there, stacking them together, and giving us just enough height to get up and get the snowflake. So that's how you do that puzzle. It had been a, it's been a while since I played this game, which is kind of refreshing, so it's like I'm kind of rediscovering it as I play. But uh, I, I get to sort of see it as a player would. Now here's the boss fight uh, of the first world, and he knocks down the uh, the coal, the burning burning coal. All you gotta do is hit him with the ice cube. It's not really that difficult um, at first. Come on, there we go. He does uh, level up a little bit though, so now he's got the lights activated. That's funny. I don't know why that's not showing up as a glitch. Um, but yeah, we just knocked the ice cube into him while avoiding the lights. And now he's really mad. He's really hammering down the coal. Um, which also hurts the ice cubes. So if the coal hits the ice cubes, that melts and we can't fight him back. And uh, so all we got to do is just one more hit. Boom, he's gone. And he's going to knock himself down. That was kind of taken from uh, Donkey Kong Country 3. There's a boss that does the same thing. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to go to goldbargames.com. You can check out our website and find all of our games available for purchase on Steam and Itch.io and maybe other platforms as well. And at the very bottom of our website, you can find our mailing list. So be sure to sign up for that. All you have to do is enter your first name, last name, and an email address. And then you just hit the subscribe button, and there you go, you're subscribed. And once you're on our mailing list, you'll receive email updates for releases of our games or demos for new games that we're working on. You'll be the first to know of all of that cool stuff, and we look forward to being able to share all of that with you. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.